Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, Minasan, Kamawa. And I do sound a little bit sick, but I'm a little bit under today. So I'm not feeling too good, but just good enough to get by. So this video may be a little bit short, but I have to show you this video for sure. This, what you're seeing, is my Monos and Tropis Balfouri. And as you can see, this is a first time mom and her babies. So this female that you're seeing is actually one of my female side reading projects that I was working on when it comes to my Monos and Tropis Balfouri. And I do have some others I will have to show you later on in this video. Yes, this is not the only one with babies. So, uh, pretty interesting for sure. And my female specimens, I have to say, they were relatively quick to catch up on breeding and everything. So the total time frame is about three and a half months from pairing to what you're seeing now. So a very short time period. And I've actually worked with this species before. And I actually pulled an egg sack of M. Balfouri on this channel for those who are curious. I'll leave a video on top right if you want to go check it out. But overall though, I know what I'm doing when it comes to this species. Because I've produced this species way too many times to be honest. So these babies here, I'm going to leave with a mom. Because it's too early to separate these babies. And although they are second instar, I can't really separate these because they're not fully developed. M. Balfouri is pretty interesting because unlike most tarantulas that are pretty much ready to separate as second instar. M. Balfouri are never ready as second instar. I'd say about six to eight molts before they're ready to go and separate individually. Or you can just keep them as a communal. I personally don't keep my M. Balfouris communal. And the reason why I do that is just because I need to keep individual records and make sure I know which specimen I'm looking at. Because if I have a bunch of M. Balfouris in one enclosure, I'm going to get the records mixed up on which specimen is which. Now for me, I don't really encourage communals because of possible cannibalism and things going wrong. But M. Balfouri, I kind of, mm, I don't know how to put it. I'm kind of on the fence. I've seen communals of M. Balfouri work, but I've also seen some cases where it kind of went down south. In my experience in the past, mines have went down south just because they are pretty much having bad molts and whatnot, but they can work. It's just that they haven't worked in my case. So I don't really keep tarantulas communal for too long when it comes to M. Balfouri and any other species I do not keep communal at all. So. For those who are wondering, I don't really keep any tarantulas communal long term. But who knows, maybe I'll give this one a shot. But in general though, when it comes to communals, pretty much the only species that can be sold as communal quote unquote in the marketplace is just in Balfouri. Any other species that you've seen that's being sold as communal most likely is either a scam or a marketing ploy to try to sell you something. But anyhow though, let us get back into the in Balfouri. So honestly, the egg sack from it being laid to babies being born was about 30 to 35, maybe 37 days, but I believe it was 32 days actually. So honestly, it wasn't that long. And M. Balfouri eggs usually develop quite quickly. So I was getting a little bit worried that it was taking a bit too long, but it's good to see the eggs hatch out in over a month. So in my experience in the past, when I pulled an M. Balfouri egg sack on day 17, they were already pretty much eggs with legs. And by day 24, they were already first in store. So waiting a little bit got me a bit worried, but it's really good to see all these babies running around. And honestly, some of them were actually climbing on their mom and she, uh, she wasn't having it. I'll tell you that, but I'm not too worried because M. Balfouris are pretty much good mothers or good tarantula moms, I guess in general. And pretty much any tarantula mom is a good tarantula mom. As long as they don't eat their own egg sac, that is. So pretty much we should be fine just leaving these babies with the mom. Now, it is going to be quite a challenge to get all of these babies to eat because they're pretty much scattered throughout the enclosure. So no matter how much pre-killed prey I offer and no matter how much I put around the enclosure, not all of them will eat because some of them is going to have a bit more trouble finding pre-killed prey than others. And some babies may eat with the mom or they probably try to eat off whatever she's eating. So it's going to be quite interesting to see. I will say this though, just a precautionary thing to tell you guys. If you have ventilation holes or any sort of ventilation that is large enough for the babies to get through, they will crawl out. So that's pretty much your disclaimer and kind of one of the downsides of having a uh, egg sac hatch within your enclosure, I guess, is that if any ventilation holes are too big, or if there's any gaps in your enclosure where babies can squeeze out, they will squeeze out. 
So please be decisive on whether you decide to leave an egg sac inside of an enclosure for inbound Fori, or if you decide to pull the egg sac yourself. Both sides, you know, whether you pull the egg sac from the inbound Fori mother or leave it in, both sides will have its drawbacks and its positives. So it's really up to you on what you want to do. I've done both already to where sometimes I pull the egg sac, and in this case, leaving it with the mom and letting the babies hatch out. Now, fortunately for me, there really isn't any gaps in my enclosures, nor is there any ventilation holes or any ventilation at all where it's big enough for the babies to escape. So I should be fine for the most part, but to you and what enclosures you have, it will vary, I guess. But overall though, tying everything back together, I was genuinely surprised. Two months after pairing, there was an egg sac. A little over a month later, there were babies. So in terms of conditioning the female, the conditioning was pretty much spot on. But I also got to give credit to the females as well because they uh, they were developing egg sacs real quick. <laughs> and trust me, I've worked with this species so many times when it comes to breeding, conditioning, etc, etc. And this is probably the quickest it has ever been in terms of pairing to babies when it comes to the species. I was like, wow, how y'all cut the net? Now I'm not going to go too in depth in terms of how to condition a female, how to get her to drop an egg sac, and pretty much anything of that nature. I'll probably save that for another future video I guess, but overall it's not that difficult to produce this species. The vitality though, that's another story for certain, but like I stated, that'll be for another video, and I guess I'll wrap it up around here. So without further ado everyone, I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, as always, the typical, feel free to like comment and subscribe and stick around i upload every single tuesday and friday here on this channel and also follow me on my ig and support me on patreon and with that stay lax and laxo out from the kumo sensei